Okay, in this section, this is unit four, our unit P, sorry, part four, pregnancy and childbirth, we're going to be looking at what is going to happen to the female cycle if the woman uh, should get pregnant, if the egg is fertilized and becomes a zygote. So the two key ideas in this screencast are going to be that implantation is going to halt the cycle. It's going to prevent it from going further from ending and the uterine lining being shed as well. It's going to provide childbirth. Uh, how childbirth is controlled is going to give us an example of a hormone that is a positive feedback loop and the name of this hormone is oxytocin. Um, and so let's go. So the key vocabulary, uh, this is a pretty easy little unit. Fertilization, hopefully we know, is the formation of the zygote. It occurs in the oviduct. It is when we produce um, the beginning of a new life, when the sperm fertilizes the egg. Uh, and this occurs as I said, in the oviduct. This is going to precede, this is going to happen before pregnancy occurs. Uh, HCG is going to be the hormone that is released from the implanted fetus. And this is going to be the hormone that maintains the corpus luteum. So this hormone is what is going to prevent the cycle from ending. So it maintains the corpus luteum. Oxytocin is going to be the hormone that re is released in and around childbirth and is a positive feedback loop. So fertilization, as we said, is the formation of a diploid cell because the egg was haploid, 23, and the sperm was haploid, remember, in the head portion of the sperm carrying the 23 chromosomes. When they unite, they make one cell, and this cell we call a diploid because it contains 46, the full set of chromosomes. Again, remembering that fertilization, it's a little bit blocked in here, but, sorry, it is occurring in the oviduct, and this is going to happen before the then the zygote moves along and implants in the uterine lining. So uh, an event that can occur, a mis misfortunate event, the uh, ectopic pregnancy, if the zygote doesn't migrate properly and it begins to divide, it can grow and enlarge the oviduct. Uh, it can be painful and dangerous and obviously it will cause the uh, fetus to be miscarried. It will not produce a viable pregnancy. So implantation is going to be what occurs after fertilization. So implantation is within the uterine lining and the connection between the maternal and the fetal environment is going to be this tissue that grows uh, the placenta. It takes about three months to be fully formed and it is what will attach the uh, attach the umbilical cord to the uterine lining. So HCG is going to be what is released as soon as implantation occurs successfully. So this, if this was the blastula, the ball of cells that migrated and now implanted, if this is the uterine lining, HCG is going to act upon the corpus luteum, the structure within the ovary, and this will cause the release of estrogen and progesterone to continue, which would maintain the cycle as is. So no shedding of the uterine lining, no release of FSH and LH. So HCG is the hormone that is released from the cells that actually implant the, the lining, the uterine lining and the implanted zygote. Uh, also interesting to note, this is the hormone when you are wanting to find out if you're pregnant, you pee on a stick. This stick is sensitive to, and that's just going crazy, sensitive to the hormone HCG and that's what causes it to change color. The hormone HCG is what is used in pregnancy kits. 
Uh, so during pregnancy, your estrogen levels and progesterone levels are going to be maintained, meaning we're not going to have any uh, shedding of the uterine lining because these estrogen and progesterone levels are going to stay high, which would have a negative feedback effect on the brain and not cause an increase in FSH and LH. So around month three, the placenta uh, will take over the production of estrogen and progesterone and at that time the corpus luteum will disintegrate. So into about month three the corpus luteum is going to continue to secrete these hormones estrogen and progesterone. Uh, so after uh, nine months the baby becomes large and is occupying most of the space and the pressure of the head on the cervix is what is going to begin this positive feedback loop. So the cervix is sensitive to the pressure and this is going to feed back to the brain, to the hypothalamus, which is going to detect uh, this pressure and begin its release of oxytocin. Oxytocin is then going to act on the muscles in the uterine lining that are going to begin the contractions that are going to initiate childbirth. So again, we need to be confident and clear on the fact that the hormone oxytocin is coming out of the posterior pituitary gland which means that it is made by the hypothalamus remembering the difference between the hypothalamus and the anterior pituitary not making these hormones for the anterior but the hypothalamus is making oxytocin and in this unit ADH we're also responsible for knowing this is the hormone that's going to act on the uterine lining so one more time, this positive feedback loop, very simple. Uh, so if we start at number one, the head of the fetus against the cervix, this is what initiates it. This sends a nervous message back up to the brain. The brain is going to release uh, oxytocin from the posterior pituitary gland. So the brain makes it, but the posterior releases it. Oxytocin is a hormone, it's carried in the bloodstream, it's going to target the muscular wall of the uterus and it's going to cause uterine contractions. These contractions are hopefully going to push the baby down which is going to cause increased pressure on the cervix which will cycle back and cause an increased amount of oxytocin to be released. I uh, hope that helped.